Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying God's Word Received, Bible Bits from James. In this session, we'll be looking at James chapter 1, verses 21 to 25, the main thing. Ah, the Christian worship experience. Prayer is refreshing to my spirit. Music sets a worship atmosphere. Singing gets my heart focused. Testimonies reveal God's glory. Giving reminds me of his blessings. But the main event is when the sermon is delivered. All the other elements enhance the worship experience, but the arrival of God's message is the key. At issue sometimes is that we're full after the other parts of the service. You go to church to get nourishment for your soul and spirit. The other parts of the service work to prepare God's message from his word, to prepare for that message. So let me ask you a question. What, do you, what are you to do during church? First, allow all the worship elements to enhance the experience. And second, prepare your heart to properly digest the bread of life. Well, let me suggest three things to do regarding the sermon. First, what to do before the sermon. James chapter 1, verse 21, the first part of it. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Listen, many voices in our world call out for our attention. We must get past them and focus on God's voice and learn to eliminate everything contrary to the truth. It must be taken off like a dirty garment. If it's displeasing to God, it is destructive to our faith. This is a continual battle in the Christian life. Second, what to do during the sermon. The second part of verse 21, receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. The rooted <clears throat> word is sown in your heart, as the soil of God, look at uh, Matthew. Jesus shared in Matthew chapter 13, verses three through nine. He says, using the image of a, of some of a sower, sowing seed. Then he spoke many things to them in parables saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The word of God must be received even though it's already there. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 25, where we refer to the, the fruit of the Spirit. Verse 16 of Galatians 5. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, 
selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Listen, the Spirit is already there, but your submission to His Lordship is necessary. The Word of God is already sown, but its reception is needed. Learn to receive the message of God's Word preached with meekness. That speaks to attitude, listening for what God says, and able to save speaks of power. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. <clears throat> first the Jew, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. It is the power of God. God's word is unique as it by itself is spirit-powered. Third, what to do after the sermon. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Be doers of the word. Look at verses 23 to 25. The ex explanation of this verse as God's word is often its own best commentary. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Self-deception. And such a person really doesn't fool anyone but himself or herself. Everyone can see the hypocrisy in a life. Faith must have action. Look at verse, chapter 2, verses 14 to 20. But what does it profit? My brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things that are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Listen, hearing and not doing is sin. James chapter 4 and verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You think about that and you have a great day.